seems like months since I've been behind the screw, uh, behind the camera. Oh my god, it's so exciting to be back. Okay, not really. We're just still doing math, and but I do have my nugget donuts coffee for the afternoon. Mm. And it's like three o'clock in the afternoon, not in the morning, which is a good thing, I guess. But let me tell you what I'm doing. First of all, if you haven't taken the time to subscribe, please take the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. All it is is a click on the button. It helps me out. It helps me out with uh, getting things through YouTube and lets them know that I'm not such a loser. That, but I am. Uh, but if you already subscribed, thank you very much. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to over the next over this week, sometime when I have time, I am going to cover the New York State Regents exams broken down by topic. Some of them are going to be very, very long, like logarithms and trigonometry, and some of them are short. Today, this one is a short one. So this one, I'm going to be covering systems of equations. There was really only two in the past regences, but I also included one that was on the Common Core regions this year because it was a really good example of how to solve a trig equation. If you would like to see me break down other particular questions, let me know, uh, but get, get to me as soon as possible. And I will uh, try to do that. Um, if you're looking for my problems, where you're going to find them is at www. Hey, why am I doing that? I'll just go to the YouTube channel real quick, or I'll go to my my website real quick. Uh, control N. Oh, it's right here. So you just go to MrKrauseMath.com. It's really simple. There it is, MrKrauseMath.com. By the way, if you haven't taken the time to download my flashcards. <laughs> I don't know what you're waiting for. Very simple directions on how to get the flashcards. Here they are. Take you probably all of about five minutes to do. You're going to log on using a, an app called Study Blue. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. Study Blue. Uh, I'm going to sign in. I'll sign in with Google. Hopefully, that doesn't show you any of my credentials. That's good. Um, and what you're looking for, I got a bunch of older stuff. And really, quite honestly, I just can't seem to figure out how to get rid of it. Uh, but what I would like you to do is to look for the one that says New Algebra 2 Trigonometry 2016. If you click on that, you should be able to go through. Now, you'll notice there's 244 cards. I can't stress enough. If you know how to do these flashcards, you're going to be in great shape. Just choose flip cards. I always choose everything random and front side. You could choose hardest to easiest, back to front, whatever. Um, click Study Now. And it just asks you simple questions. Do you know the formula for a geometric sequence? If you don't know that that a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1, then it's a problem. If you do it, whew, got it. What is the cosine of 0? 1. Got it. What would you do first? So this is f of g of x. What would you do first? Well, if you remember correctly, you do g of x 8 first, and so on and so forth. Anyway, so those are really, really, really great, great flashcards. If you have the flashcards memorized, when you walk into your regions exam, you're going to be like, bam, I'm ready for this thing. Nothing's going to stand in your way. You're going to just know how to get to, you know, you're just going to know. You're going to look at a problem and you're like, oh, yeah, I remember this, or I remember this. Nothing's going to stump you. If you're looking for all my Algebra 2 trig, this, uh, this one right here is all the Algebra 2 trig regions exams. Here it is. Psh those are all the old regions exams. But if you click on Algebra 2 Topic Review, what we're going to do here is I've already got, uh, man, I don't even know if I recorded all 11 days. I hope I did. And I just spelled trigonometric graphs prop wrong. Oh, I'm not done. I still have at least that one to do. Is this one good? Day 1 regression. Day 11 regression. Looks like I've already done regression. I don't know. So anyway, um, we're going to be doing another video. And then you'll also see on here some New York State broken down. I might actually add it as a new topic here, or I might not. Anyway, let's uh, let's get ready to roll. Um, let's see, where am I going? We're going to OneNote. And I will be right back. Maybe. Yeah, sorry about that little blip in the screen there. You have to take breaks every few minutes. Otherwise, my uh, computer... Or the software doesn't like it. So here we are. We're going to just do three questions. Now this first one. Now the other thing you got to really, really know is where are you in the problem? Where are you in the test? This is a two-point question. A two-point question shouldn't take you very long. They should be relatively quick. They should be relatively easy. Now if this problem stumps you. By the way, 
Uh, if I didn't tell you, you should be able to download these files. Try these problems on your own. If you don't want to print them, at least look at this. Do some, do some calculations on a piece of paper. Don't just sit here and watch me do these problems, okay? It's useless for you. Okay, you have to try these first. But this is a two-point question. If you don't know how to do this right away, you should, or you should at least try something. So hopefully you've already done that. And if you haven't, hit pause and then do it. If you have, then let's get going. What I'm going to show you is this is really equal to y. So everywhere I see a y, I can replace it with x plus 3. And that's going to replace it in this one. This is called the substitution method. You take one of them and you sub it in for the other. And that's usually the best way to go about doing these. So what I have here is x times y. And anytime you sub in, use parentheses. So you got 1 x times x plus 3 equals 10. So again, you know, this is what y is equal to right here. y is equal to this. So when I plug it in, this is now my new y. Okay? All right, so I'm just going to solve this. I'm going to distribute. I get x squared plus 3x. Oh, sorry, this is equal to 10. 10, sorry. Another dumb mistake. That would have been a dumb mistake. Equals 10. Well, this is a quadratic. Quadratic should be set equal to 0. The reason this is so easy is because the factoring is easy. The substitution was easy. Somehow this 10 does not appear to be too easy. When I bring this 10 over, I'm going to subtract 10, right? So it's minus 10 equals 0. I will do a little factoring x and x. And then it's going to be plus 5 and minus 3. So my answers are x equals negative 5 and x equals neg uh, positive 3. Now the question said only find the x values. All right, that's good enough, but do you really want to stop there? Do you really? The answer is when you're done, you're going to say, okay, negative 5 and 3. If you got those, by the way, you're in great shape. Those are the right answers. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, it's going to be a long day, kids. I'm going to show you that I just made a mistake. I'm going to show you why. Even though you look like you got the right answers, everything looks good. By the way, if you got these, you did not get the right answers. But let me show you why you want to show this. I'm going to figure out what my y values is. So if I plug in x equals negative 5, y is equal to negative 5 plus 3. y is equal to negative 2. Let's test that in this equation. x times y equals 10. Negative 5 times negative 2. That's 10 equals 10. Perfect. Perfect. Now I'm going to try this one. I'll do it in a different color. Green, because green is an ugly color. And it's wrong. So we said the answer was 3. So if y is equal to 3 plus 3. Okay. So y is equal to 6. So I come down here and I say, okay, let me check it in this equation. Uh, x, oops, excuse me. That equation says x times y is equal to 10. Or 3 times 6 is, whoa, wait a second, 18 equals 10. That doesn't make any sense. No, that's not true. So all of this great stuff, and I would only get a 1 out of 2 because I didn't check my answers and say, hey, those aren't right. So it's really imperative that you check your answers. And I'm glad I did because my problem is right here. And I hope you saw it, but I probably did it. Most of you probably saw it when I did it. This should be x minus 2. And that's because um, negative 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And negative 5 plus 2 is positive 3. So 2 is my answer, and that should be up here. So you'd say, OK, my answers are really negative 5 and 2. And if you did check those, you would be correct. Sorry about that. I actually didn't mean to do that, but it was actually good that I did. This question here was on the 2016, the, the first Common Core Regions. But it is in the old curriculum, so I figured, hey, might as well add it in. It's another great example of a um, solving systems of equation. Now, if you'll notice, this was in a four-point question. Now we're in a four-point question. By the way, up here it did not ask for the y values, correct? Here it just says solve the following system. And I'm going to tell you right now, the most common mistake made is not finding y values. As a matter of fact, that's one of my that's one of my flashcards. What's the most what do you got to think about it? What do you got to remember when you're solving systems of equations? And you got to remember at the end, find the y values. Alright, I'll be right back. Every time I come back, I got, it's like magic. I got this uh, Dunkin' Donuts thing here. 
So uh, this wasn't a bad question. Remember, it's four points. We've got a lot of work to do. It's not been nearly as easy as that last one. The thing is, I would like to get either x equal to something or y equal to something. So, but that's finding one of these, finding one of these for x or y, man, that would be almost impossible. But this one's not too bad. Like if I wanted to solve this for y, I'd say, okay, 2y is equal to negative 2x plus 10. Just bringing that over. And then I divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. I would get y equals negative x plus 5. And now you're like, oh, okay, wait a second. This is y. So everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace it by putting it right in there. So I'll come over here and I'll say, all right, x minus 3 squared plus, now I'm not going to put y in there. I'm going to put negative x plus 5 plus 2. Remember, this was the y that I just found out, and then there's the plus 2. Squared equals 16. All right, not so bad so far. Uh, this is x minus 3 squared. I'll kind of go slowly through it. Negative x plus 7 squared equals 16. All right, squared means we have to double distribute. So we're going to do x minus 3, x minus 3, plus negative x plus 7 times negative x plus 7 equals 16. Now this first one's really easy. It's just x squared minus 6x plus 9. I'm not going to go through that one too slowly. That one's pretty easy. This one, negative x times negative x is actually positive x squared. Negative x times 7 is negative 7x, and negative 7x makes negative 14x, and 7 times 7 is 49. So plus 49 equals 16. So now we'll just clean up stuff on the left side. So we've got 2x squared minus 20x plus 58 equals 16. Divide by 2, so I get, I'll take out a 2, and oh, I, no, oh, maybe I'm going to bring that 16 over first. Okay, so I get 2x squared minus 20x plus 44, because we're going to subtract that 16 over, equals 0. Now I'll take out the 2, and I'll do x squared minus 10x plus 20 no, this is not 44, it's 42. My numbers were just about to not work out. So this should be 21 equals zero. See, yeah, you can make such dumb mistakes. You can make such a, just a tiny mistake right there, and you're like, done, I'm glad I found it. So now the factoring is easy. Had I not done that, that factoring would be brutal. And generally, it's not that hard, the factoring. This is going to be x minus 3, x minus 7. Now, if you're not a very good factoring one, you're going to want to watch the factoring video. I show you how to use the Garfin calculator in order to help yourself out with that a little bit. But I'm going to use the TI Inspire. This doesn't give us a solution because it doesn't have an X. So I get two solutions, X equals 3 and it X equals 7. Now, kids at this time, please don't get overly excited. Like, oh, my God, I'm done by the way answer. You're halfway done. You still have to do two more things. You have to find the y values, which, by the way, would are vitally important, and you need to check your answer. So we're going to use this second equation. I'm going to use this second equation. So I'm going to check for x equal to, I forgot what my two answers were, 3 and 7. I want to figure out what my y value is. So x equals 3. So I'll do 2 times 3 plus 2y equals 10. I just want to find the y value, and I'm going to use this, this equation because it's a lot easier. So this is 6 plus 2y equals 10, 2y equals 4, or y equals 2. So one of my answers appears to be 3, 2. Now I'm going to check the other one, x equals 7. So 2 times 7 plus 2y equals 10. This is 14, so I'll subtract 14. So I get 2y equals negative 4, or y equals negative 2. So now I've got 7, negative 2. Now the last thing I want to do is just quickly check this. 
So that means I'm going to take this one over here, and we're going to check 3, 2. So 3 minus 3 squared plus 2 plus 2 squared equals 16. Goes away, I get 4 squared equals 16, so 16 equals 16. Oops, so it checks. Now I'm going to check 7 comma negative 2. Same equation. We're going to do 7 minus 3 squared plus negative 2 plus 2 squared. Does that equal 16? Well, this goes away, and I get 4 squared equals 16, or 16 equals 16. And there it is. Now, do yourself a favor. Here's what I want you to do. You've checked it. When you're done at the end, make yourself look like a professional. Come down here and go whoosh, whoosh, curly brackets. My answers, sir, are 3 comma 2 and 7 comma negative 2. Now, I've had kids do this in the past that transcribe things incorrectly. Make sure that's in there. And make sure your other one, which was 3, 2, was in there as well. We got 3, 2 in there and just check them. And then box it in. So that when your teacher's grading it or some other teacher's grading it, you're like, yes, this kid's a professional. He must have had Mr. Krause as a teacher's helper on the internet, something like that. All right, I'll be right back. So this is, in fact, the only six-point Regents question that's a system of equations. In fact, it's only the big one, only one of the big ones that I've seen ever. So we haven't seen one in a long time, so I want to make sure you know how to do it. I don't really anticipate seeing one of these. It's usually a log question or a trig question. That's the six-point question or an exponential question. But we haven't seen one like this in a while, so who knows? Maybe we will. So we're going to do it the same way as we were just doing it. We're going to take this equation. You always take the simple one, and you're going to solve for y or x. So in this case, if I, oops, if I just bring the x over, I can solve for y very easily. So I'm going to add x, add x. And so I end up with y equals x plus 5. I just like writing it like that better. Here's what y is equal to. All right, no problem. So now, everywhere I see a y, I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace that with x plus 5. That's my new, my, my, my new, blah, 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 blah. Man, I think I need more coffee. Oh, good thing I had some Dunkin' Donuts. So we're going to replace that with 4x squared equals negative 17x plus x plus 5 eat plus four. Now, if there was a number in front of that y, you would have had to do this. Like if there was a three in front, you would have had to do using parentheses. But the good thing was there wasn't. We just have to put it in there. All right. Since this is my squared term and it's positive, I'm going to bring everything to the left side. But I want to clean up stuff first. So 4x squared equals uh, negative 16x plus 9. This actually turns out to be much, almost as easy as the last problem, but it's six points rather than four points. 4x squared, I'll show you where this hard part is, plus 16x minus 9 equals 0. I added the 16x over. Again, you want to make sure your squared term is positive. Now, the factoring here is not too nice. I should probably already have my graphing calculator up to show you a few things. All my stuff I got loaded. Oh, my gosh. Going. Where's my calculator? All right. I don't even know where I am anymore. There, we'll go here. All right, so uh, I know what this is, um, but if you have problems, you're, you have one day left in your trial period? Huh, that's not good. I'm going to lose my calculator in a minute. Uh, anyway, um, hmm. So we're just going to do this by calculator. That means i got to get my videos done quickly. Um, and if you go, there's a thing on here. It's called menu uh, three, numeric three, and then one. It's called a poly root solver. It's on here. I have a, uh, it's just a very simple way to graph. When I do, if you go see the, watch the factoring video, I'll go through that a little bit more in depth. All you need to do is put in what A, B, and C are. So four, 16, and negative nine. So four, four, 16 and it doesn't like this negative 9 click OK 
hit enter and it actually tells you what the answers are it doesn't tell you what the factoring is it tells you what the answers are so I know my answers are x equals negative 9 over 2 and x equals positive 1 half well if this is negative that means this had to be positive positive. You and now if this 2 wasn't here it would just be x equals negative 9 so that would be x plus 9 so that 9 goes here and then there's a 2x up here and it should make sense that this is going to be 2x and 2x because that's what multiplies it positive 4 and since this is positive this has to be negative and negative 1 now looking at this this would give you positive 1 half this would give you negative 9 halves I'm halfway done I found the x's I now need to find the y's and so what I'm going to do what was that equation? 5 equals y minus x. So I'm going to uh, grab a new pen. I'll go, okay, x equals uh, negative 9 over 2. Let me make sure that was the right one. Negative 9 over 2, good. So y, oops, excuse me, 5. 5 is equal to y minus negative 9 over 2. See how you could get screwed up if you don't substitute in using parentheses because I almost just wrote down 5 minus 9 over 2. That would be a problem. So this is uh, equal to 5 equals y plus 9 over 2. If I subtract 9 over 2 in my calculator, I get uh, 1 half equals y. So my first answer is negative 9 over 2 comma 1 half. Now I'm going to check x equals positive one half. So y, I want to keep doing that. Five, five minus equals five equals y minus five x. Jeez, Blah, can't write. All right, so I'm going to plug this in. So five equals y minus one half. So it's a negative one half. We're going to add it. Now, you know that could be 5.5. If you did that in your calculator, you'd probably come up with 11 over 2 equals y. It doesn't really matter if you use 11 over 2 or 5.5. So my two answers are, looking all professional, negative 9 over 2 comma 1 half. Make sure you use the right numbers we came up with. And the other one is 1 half comma one, uh, 11 over 2. Now the cool thing about this calculator is I can stow these in check. So what I want to do is I'm going to go back to this original problem here. Now this is the really complicated one. We're going to use this one. So I'm going to stow negative 9 divided by 2, stow it into x. And my y value was 1 half, so I'm going to take 1 divided by 2 and stow it into y. And my equation said 4x squared, that's the left side, 81. And the right side said negative 17x, negative 17x plus y plus 4. Oh, plus y, not plus 4. Why did I do plus 4? See, I already had a... I need a nap. Plus y. So the equation was negative 17x plus y plus 4. Plus y plus 4. Hopefully this is 81. There it is. 81 equals 81. So that one worked out good. So now I'm going to check the other one. The other one was neg uh, positive 1 half, 11 halves. So I'm going to take 1 divided by 2 and stow it into x. 1 divided by... <sighs> 1 divided by 2 and stow it into x. And I'm going to take 11 divided by 2 and stow it into y. So now I'll go back up. I don't want to retype these since I already messed that up. That side is 1, and then if I do 4x squared, I'll retype that one. 4x squared, which is the left side, 1, 1 equals 1, checks. There it is. I've checked it. Now you write yourself a note. Dear, dear teacher, a note. Dear Miss Math Grader, I bodied this problem. And by the way, if you're not cool like some of the kids in my school, you don't need body means I crushed this or I killed this. 
I killed this question, something like that. Anyway, write him a cool note. I rock this question. Star it. It's done. All right, that's it. That's all there is. All right, bye-bye. Catch you on the flip side, homies.